All right, 7.31 is your time right now. Sid joins at the desk, and so many people have questions, Sid. Uh, still with COVID-19, things are looking positive. They're looking better. You got a haircut, fresh new man, fresh new do. Uh, and we joined someone who also has a fresh new do, and that is Dr. Zane Chagla. His haircut's better. His <laughs> haircut's better. Still looking, still looking good. Infectious diseases physician, good morning to you, Dr. Chagla. Good morning. All right, we have a slew of questions that we're going to throw your way from our viewers, if you're good with that. Yeah, let's, uh, yep. let's start with a tweet from Elisa at Breakfast TV, and we appreciate all the tweets coming in. Doctor, uh, Lisa's question is as follows. Are we talking about booster shots yet? When should this shot be given after a person's second dose? Doctor, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, there, there are all the companies are working on this, Pfizer and Moderna. They're in clinical trials now. A lot of people have actually received their third shot in the United States as part of these efforts. Um, it's still going to be a little bit of time, though. And, and I think, you know, these vaccines still have a decent amount of efficacy, even with these variants, uh, to prevent people from ending up in hospital and dying, but recognizing that they likely will be coming. So the expectation, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half before these go in, but they're going to be more the optimization shot. The shots you get today are the ones that do most of the work. That next shot is probably going to be the one that does a little bit more on top of that. Okay, an email from Sam, and this is an interesting one, um, saying, I've not heard anyone pose the question as to why we are allowed to fly anywhere, but our land borders remain closed. Is it safer to travel to the U.S. on a plane, exposing yourself to thousands of strange people at an airport, followed by sitting in a closed environment of a plane with a multitude of people you don't even know? How is it not safer crossing a land border in the privacy of your own vehicle with the people you live with? Dr. Chegla, what say you? Yeah, I mean, it is a reasonable point. I think, you know, again, a car ride with people that you know that are, you know, doing what they need to be doing and their exposures are, are relatively the same is probably different than a plane, although airplanes uh, on their own have good ventilation and, and likely mitigate the spread of the virus. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think these bring up fundamental questions. As we talk about opening our borders, you know, do we do it equitably? Do we use testing and vaccination as our method and not necessarily care about where people are coming from or how they're coming over the border? Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I think as, as we get forward with, with an open border policy, these are the questions that we need to deal with in terms of risk mitigation and, and what's considered high risk and low risk. Uh, permission to go slightly off script and ask him a question? Uh, sports related because Dr. Chagla, the Stanley Cup Finals going on right now. Game four yeah. is tonight in Montreal. Uh, the Canadians wanted a little over 10,000 for the game Friday. The province of Quebec says no, no, 3,500 indoors. Yet, uh, Dr. Chagla, and I'm sure you've seen the pictures and we have them here, uh, the number of people that are congregating outside of Bell Centre in downtown Montreal, it is staggering. Some thought there was anywhere from, from 20 to 25,000 there Friday night. As a man of science, because this is the topic right now in sports, I'm being serious. When you see this crowd, how is this any safer than allowing the Habs to only have 3,500 people indoors? Yeah, I mean, you know, ideally people would space out a bit more. But we do have to recognize that outdoor transmission is much more rare than indoor transmission because the ventilation is more optimal. There are people in people's face there, clearly, and, and so that's not necessarily going to mitigate everything. Um, but, you know, I think the ideal setting would be creating more environments outdoors for people to distance, you know, creating the, the area around the Bell Centre to be much more pedestrian friendly and have people around a bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, you know, the, the capacity limits indoors are much more of an issue than capacity limits outdoors, recognizing the ventilation is a whole lot more optimal outdoors than indoors. Dr. Chegla, I want to slide in one last question. I'm going to combine two because a lot of people are asking about those who are under the age of 12 who, you know, can't get vaccinated yet. So part, two part question. One, when do you assume that the groups will get vaccinated? When, when do you think that approval will happen? But also in the meantime, what do you do? You know, you've got unvaccinated kids, you have vaccinated adults. So how does that all work? Yeah, so I mean, I think you know, the trials for children are coming out uh, probably towards the end of the summer, early fall. Uh, and it'll probably be a little bit more time before they're fully approved in that population. So that does leave a couple of months before kids are, are fully vaccinated. And, you know, I think there's a gradient of risk here. You know, we still know how to prevent COVID-19 in most settings. So keeping people outdoors, masking when, when, uh, when really indoors in high-risk settings. 
Um, but for those interactions when they're small with people that are fully vaccinated, you know, the Public Health Agency of Canada has said if everyone's comfortable with, they can take down the masks. We know that young children are, for the most part, at low risk of complications from COVID-19. And so some of those interactions can take place. Um, you know, taking kids to the Bell Centre, probably not the biggest thing right now, but having an indoor gathering with family and friends that are fully vaccinated with kids is probably reasonable in the grand uh, scheme of things if the kids are relatively healthy otherwise. Uh, Dr. Zane Chagla. Dr. Chagla, thank you very much. We never have enough time. No. Promise us you'll come <laughs> back because this is great. Of course. Of course. Thank you so much. Really great questions no and, and awesome answers here, too. And uh, if you want to continue the conversation at Breakfast TV, Dr. Chagla won't be here for it, but uh, we will be doctors for you. And No, we have nothing. We no, don't have the answers. No, that's, that's why the doctor's here. That's why he joins us. I know nothing. I just play one on TV. Uh, Frank Ferragini has been at the Humane Society all morning. The pictures are just, I mean, never mind the, the, the important uh, weather information. One beautiful pup after another. Who do we got there, Frank?